Hello, hello, hello. Today is Monday, May 22nd, 2023. Here follow the solutions of problem 171 about angular resolutions. I may not post the solutions today, but I'm recording them today. I may wait a few more days. I selected Ulf Heller's solutions, but I adopted them slightly. So, question number one. By the way, I cover all this in great detail in my lecture 34 of Edo 2. And I'm sure that Ulf Heller watched that lecture. So the first question is, what is the maximum possible angular resolution, the diffraction limitation of an optical telescope with a diameter of 2.4 meters of the mirror in blue light? So here is Ulf's solution. He gives you the wavelengths of blue light d, which is the diameter of the mirror, 2.4 meters, and as I derive in my lectures, this then is the angular resolution. This is in radians, this is in degrees, and this is in arc seconds. So it is about 1 twentieth of an arc second. Now comes the key question, what is the actual resolution of such ground-based telescopes of which many exist on the various continents? That is nowhere near one twentieth of an arc second, is at very best half to one arc second. I have done lots of observations <laughs> from optical observ observatories in Chile and we never even had one arc second. It was always, almost always worse. And the result is, it's due to the density fluctuations in the Earth's atmosphere. So what is the angular resolution of the Hubble Space Telescope? It has a diameter of 2.4 meters, but there's no atmosphere about this. So there's no distortion due to the atmosphere. And so the result then is that it is one twentieth of an arc second, an enormous improvement over ground-based observatories. So I asked then, why is there such a large difference between ground-based and Hubble? And the reason is the turbulence and optical density fluctuations in the Earth's atmosphere. Then we move to James Webb. Um, I asked you what the resolution of James Webb is at two microns. The diameter of the mirror is about 6.5 meters. And here you see Ulf Heller's answer. It's about one twelfth of an arc second. Um, Two micrometers is near infrared. In blue light, which has a much smaller wavelength, the angular resolution would be somewhere around 150s, maybe 160s of an arc second. Last question. What is the angular resolution of the human eyes? D, that is the diameter of the pupil of a human, is about 3 to 5 millimeters. And so if you use D in the equations that you have seen above, then you find that it is about half to one arc minute. And I demonstrated in my lectures, in my lecture 34 of 802, I think in a very dramatic way. 
I have pinholes with lights behind it on my desk in front of the blackboard. And the pin pinholes are chosen in such a way that students in front of the lecture hall see those pinholes separated by more than one arc minutes. But the ones in the back of the lecture hall will see them separated by much less than one arc minutes. And so the beauty is, I ask the students who sees one or who sees two light, two lights, and all students in front of the lecture hall raise their hands. Then I ask who see only one light, and then all students in the back of the lecture hall raise their hands. So I test right there the angular resolution of the human eye. It's remarkable how resolutions have changed over the ages depending upon our ability. Number one, to get telescope outside the Earth's atmosphere. Number two, to increase the diameter of the mirrors.